Okay, so then we already covered like how the Dream Junkies ended and everything like that. Um, so then post Dream Junkies, you're kind of like in your solo career. Um, you found some new artists, uh, John Keith, Foggy Ra, Paul Russell, Jet Trouble for a bit. How's the process of discovering and I would say uh, developing these artists? Because now when you look at these artists, they're scaling big numbers now. How is that process of like, you know, like, because I know Foggy Ra, I don't think Foggy Ra's from like the Cali area. I'm pretty sure he's from out of state, you know? So how is it like discovering all, all three of these artists, Paul, John, and Foggy, and how is it like developing their talents because that's kind of like what it was when they were kind of like on King Dreams Entertainment and uh, you were kind of like uh, helping them out and giving them resources. Yeah, I mean, I, I Foggy came around. Well, Foggy and John Keith both came around. Oh, Foggy, John Keith and Jet were all around during the break stays. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so Foggy flew out 2016 and spent like a month with us or a couple weeks with us. I remember that. And he, um, he was still finishing college at that point i don't really remember mm. and so then when we were like in virginia we'd bring him out and he like this is on the soul rebel tour but one of the i think it's either the soul rebel tour or the good religion tour we would bring out foggy and he would he would kind of do his thing mm. um jet was around a little bit too would, when we would go through dallas we'd hang out with jet um and then John Keith would like pull up. I remember John Keith vividly was at our couple open mics. He was at my Americana listening party. So these guys were kind of around already. And I would say I kind of I kind of just played different roles with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, John didn't John didn't really need much besides just like a, like an audience. Like he just kind of needed to be put in the Christian rap ecosystem, which at the time I was close to Rapzilla, right? I, I was close to churches. That wasn't very difficult to do. So I just kind of started throwing my own tours again just to kind of give him exposure. You know, so 2018, mm -hmm. we do a tour with me and him. And uh, that wasn't very difficult. Jet was an uh, uh, a curveball because he was wanting to kind of do more pop stuff. And I didn't really know how to how to package that really well, right? Mm -hmm. And then Foggy, we never actually did any business together, but me and Foggy have been close for years. Oh, um, we would collaborate, we'd hang out. Anytime he's in California, he's usually with me. Um, and that was just more like just being a big brother to him. You know, like, like I think we knew early on that we weren't really compatible from a business standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and so Foggy was just me being kind of an encourager to him and Really, yeah, just really just encouraging him, man. Like just kind of being in his corner, yeah. like as he got engaged, as he got married, all that kind of stuff. And just like, just just being homies. And then, you know, there's other guys are part of that. Like mm -hmm. uh, like T. Ross the Giant, T T Tanner, who, who passed away recently. Oh, yeah. um, he was also around at this time. There's um, other guys that were in that mix that I would help out, but wouldn't necessarily do, do business with per se. Mm -hmm. um, and then Paul Russell, I discovered Paul through a song on Jet Trouble's album, and he mm -hmm. was in Ithaca at the time going to Cornell, mm -hmm. and I had a show in Toronto, actually. Oh. Um, and so this is 2017. I had a show, in, I, had a, I had a, no, I had a meetup, excuse me, I had a meetup in Toronto, and I drove from Toronto to Ithaca. No, I had a show in Buffalo, drove from Buffalo to Ithaca, and then drove from Ithaca back to Toronto and did like a meet a meetup uh, in Toronto. And so, Paul was another, Paul didn't really know if he wanted to do music. Like he went to Cornell University, which is an Ivy League school to do uh, political science. Yeah. Like he was thinking about getting into politics. And so he was very sober about doing music and he was very fun to work with, man. He was easy to work with, he's very talented. Paul was probably, Paul and Jet, was, but more so Paul, like Paul comes from like a great family, yeah. very stable individual. Um, he wasn't, a typical like hyper emotional artist like he just kind of would just show up and deliver great records and yeah super easy to work with super flexible um and so i think we were all i mean and, and i still like i still talk to foggy like he's supposed to come on the pod soon mm -hmm. just talked to him maybe like a week ago john keith is is going to be kind of like a regular personality hopefully on the pod um uh paul me and paul are still good we have a uh, me paul and nick have a song that i hopefully will come out this year that's really good mm -hmm. um and so, yeah, man, those are just like the homies. But I think what happened for me was as YouTube took off mm -hmm. for me in 2020, I just had to search my own heart and be like, do I really like having these like personal business relationships yeah. where I'm like 
helping people and the relationship is great initially because I'm investing way more. But once they get popping, I have way less to offer because they're oh, popping, yeah, yeah. right? But then they still kind of owe me albums or whatever, right? And I'm just like, I don't really like this business model. Yeah. Like it's not fun. Mm -hmm. And if I and if I had a thought about this 20 years ago and just stood on my own too and what I felt like God was calling me to do, I probably would have, I mean, we probably wouldn't have got a lot of great music, right? Mm -hmm. Like we probably wouldn't have got good religion. We probably wouldn't have got the break stuff, mm -hmm. but I probably would have had way more peace and stability it throughout my whole career, but it just took me, I took like the scenic route to get to this place of like, I don't think I do well with doing business with other people where there's these weird like part in a record label, the, the music business is just weird. And you could be the most upfront and the most over the top and like completely do deals that are not the orthodox deal, right? Like real quick, like just real simple, like a traditional record label deal would work like this. Say somebody gives you $10,000 to do a record, mm -hmm. right? And so you have a 50-50 split. Yeah. Well, in order to recoup, pay your money back, that $10,000, you would actually have to, you generate that only from your 50%, meaning mm -hmm. that in order to pay back $10,000, you'd have to generate $20,000, yeah. and then you would start seeing your 50%. Mm -hmm. That's how a traditional record label works. Now, this gets way goofier if someone gives you $100,000 with a major label, mm -hmm. and your royalty rate's only 20%, that means you'd have to generate $500,000 to pay back your $100,000 that they gave you up front. Right. Yeah. This is why most artists stay in debt. So like we defied that. Like we didn't do that. Like if like if I'm putting in 10 grand, I'm we're gonna make my 10 grand back together. And yeah. then the first dollar that comes in after 10 grand, mm -hmm. we split it 50-50. You don't gotta pay 20, pay me 20 grand for 10 grand. Like yeah. it becomes a crazy like, so even doing things completely different and like mm -hmm. unorthodox, it still felt weird when I'm like, yo, John, I helped John Keith really, really, really heavy in the first two albums, mm -hmm. but by album three and four, he's booming. Like, he doesn't need my help. What am I gonna do? I'm not mixing the records. I'm not producing on the records. I'm not mm -hmm. rapping on the records, but he still owes me 50% for three more albums. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, and even if I were giving him capital to work with, I wasn't giving him a hundred grand or 50 grand. It'd be like, hey man, there's five grand for this. There's a couple grand for this. Mm -hmm. It just didn't make sense to continue in that business model. And, this, and, and so I was just like, I just let everybody out of their our agreements. Like oh. I think John owed me an album. I think Paul maybe owed me an album or two. Um, Jet owed me a couple albums. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I, it doesn't even matter. I don't honestly don't even remember. So I just was kind of like, man, I'm doing what I love to do. I'm mm -hmm. speaking. I can still do music. All of these relationships are people I want to be with, friends with for the rest of my life. You know, yeah. specifically like John Keith, Foggy. Well, get me and Foggy were doing business together. I, I, it's just such a backwards business model. Yeah. Um, that un unless the only way I could see it working is unless you always have big bags to give mm -hmm. and you always have infrastructure to add. But if mm -hmm. you're just doing like a regular 50 50 split at a ten thousand dollar budget or 20, like it doesn't it doesn't really make sense to 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 even have a record label, in my opinion, yeah. like, you know, what I mean, like, I don't know, I just I think the game has changed so much. And I also feel like it enables the artists to be lazy themselves because mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff I was doing, if you want to be a great independent artist, you should learn to do that stuff yourself, you know? And so, yeah, man, that's like the the, the, the short end of it. So by the time 2020 came around, like, I think we just kind of all had a conversation and I'm like, bro, I'm not going to hold you up. Like, go do your own stuff. Like, I don't, I, I this is so insignificant to what money I was even making at the time. That like, what am I tripping for about, uh, album you know and so yeah man so so you know honestly we've all i don't know i feel like i'm in a much better spot with everybody now than i was before just because it felt weird but now you know we're we're all homies and in good spots and, and, and again and again like a guy like foggy who i never really had paperwork with or contracts with like we could just be friends and, and it's solid yeah no um yeah just because like watching because i remember like i started watching you like uh yeah probably like five six years ago like Watching you guys, like, watching you grow up with these guys, like, it kind of seemed like King's Dream Entertainment, like, uh, on the outside was, like, this record label, and then you're just, like, coaching these guys along, but, but all, 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 all the while along, it was kind of like, you're kind of, like, being the, the big bro, and you're kind of, like, helping them just, if you if they need something, you know, you kind of, like, help them get connected or anything like that, and then on the financial side, everything's, like, 50-50, and, um, yeah, like, I rarely hear that just because, like, most of the time, most of the story is that, like, um, when an artist goes into um, a major label or any label, then that's, you're right, like, things get goofy and weird. And then, like, two years later, you know, we hear about the artist talking about, like, oh, like, 
you know, like Sony Music or Capitals like, yeah. or whoever, like, it's holding up like... Uh, no one has a good experience with their label, man. There's yeah. not people that be like, I had a great situation in my label. Like, you know, mm. you don't really hear those stories. You only hear the negative stories. And that's because it's just a weird business model. Um, it is. And it's like, I've heard good stories as well. You know, I've, I've heard of like, I don't know, for instance, like Social Club Misfits. Um, they went into signing with Capitol Records because they didn't have the resources and knowledge back then. And then once they got onto Capitol, you know, I think they're still on uh, the label with them, but um, they were able to grow and, you know, understand the business better. You know what I mean? And then once once you get what you need, you know, eventually, you know, move on, you know, five years down and you kind of like you, you build your own um, brand or thing you've got going on. But, um, but yeah, I know like, yeah, you hear, you know, good stories of people who get some good things out of it. And then you hear like the terrible stories of like, I'm not dropping like my next album until like my label releases me or whatever is. And then lawsuits yeah. get involved in it. it. It's a whole crazy mess. But for you to like split it 50-50, um, that's very rare to even hear. So.